Lucia, do you know why you're here? Guess it was the weather. The GTA 6 trailer broke minds, revived the dead, and it also made a lot of people feel very funny downstairs. And even though there was an overload of video analysis on a mere one minute and a half video trailer, I think many still don't fully understand how overwhelmingly advanced GTA 6 looks like in the trailer alone. Considering it's all game engine, not CGI, since the footage itself had a few bugs that could only occur in game engine. I know them booties look nice, okay, but we're gonna be children of God here. We're gonna geek out here a little bit because I don't intend to only point out features as many before me already have done. But I'm mostly interested in showing you the intricate game mechanics and concepts present in the GTA 6 trailer such as vertex deformation and advanced volumetrics. Concepts that Rockstar will revolutionize and make every past game look like doo-doo. And alongside that, I'll be comparing the tech shown in the GTA 6 trailer versus the industry standards, aka the competition. I know everyone lost their minds with the amount of NPCs shown on screen at the same time in one place. And I'll obviously touch that, but I have to address bending and poles. What? That, that, didn't, that didn't sound right, did it? Vertex deformation is maybe something that you don't typically think about when you play games, but you must have realized most objects have one shape and one shape only. Wheels are round, rulers are straight. And for the most part, this is true in our world, but we all know we can actually bend rulers and make them not so straight. I should know because I was a very dumb kid that had fun watching rulers break uh, for no goddamn reason. But this property is usually not seen in games frequently, since this implies a manipulation of 3D objects' vertices, which are small dots that are spread throughout 3D objects that compose its shape. Of course, we have games that are pretty much known for this deformation, like BeamNG where parts that suffer impact are never going to be shaped in a predefined way. It's all calculated in real time. Now this happens more frequently than you think in other games as well though, from your typical car damage to your realistic facial expressions in some games. But that's pretty much as far as most game developers will go. I mean, watch this diving board in GTA 4. It would be nice if it actually behaved like a goddamn diving board and bent according to the character's weight and momentum in order to pull a 6, 7, 20 double backflip, no scope. <coughs> But in the new GTA 6 trailer, we are able to see a pole that is being used to pull an alligator out of the pool because that is something that happens in Florida, apparently. We see it bend due to the weight and force applied by both the animal control guy and the alligator. Now, I know what you might say, Silver, that's a cutscene, so most likely it's all motion capture magic, in which this bending motion would automatically be applied and not require any kind of 3D object manipulation. And that's a good point. If you want to be fucking lame. <laughs> I'm kidding, that is a good point. However, motion capture isn't perfect. Mocap will mostly record the movements in gapped points that have space between them. If you simply rely in these points, you would have jagged straight lines from one point to the other. And that doesn't seem very much like a curve to me. Essentially, you can give the base of the bendable shape in mocap, but to achieve what we saw in the GTA 6 trailer, it actually requires some tweaking of vertices, which is a highly detailed piece of work. Now, if you're still not happy with that example and you just think it's a giant animation, not really the result of an engine deforming objects in real time, you can also have this shot of a car crash where the water bins have clearly been impacted upon and deformed accordingly to the crash. And this is not a reach to think that Rockstar would go as far to make it this detailed, because in GTA 5, a more crude version of it already happens with those impact attenuators that exist in GTA 5 highways. And if none of these examples tickled your pickle, this will certainly tickle your pickle. As you can analytically check out this girl's ass for science, because you'll notice that the bikini actually changes shape when she turns around. Besides, we've already seen Rockstar apply these deformations in Red Dead Redemption 2, when your fishing pole bent when the fish bit the bait. So it's fair to speculate that Rockstar might apply this beyond cutscenes and actually incorporate in the game engine like impact on volleyball nets or something. Volumetric clouds are nothing new at this point, as Red Dead Redemption 2 already perfected this to an unprecedented level as well, and recently CSGO 2 incorporating it to balance strats and gameplay. 
they kind of forgot to not let people become Michael Jackson in live servers, but that's that's something else. Which volumetrics is a fancy way of saying that clouds are not a 2D PNG file stamped on the sky, but rather a 3D entity that will act accordingly to light, shape change and density. Smoke has always been something pretty linear in most games. No, not that smoke. That smoke is very round, actually. Where the focus was only to make it look good and plausible. But of course, this smoke is pretty simplistic, as it will even go through walls, because it is essentially a 2D sort of animated image. Volumetric clouds are one thing. In Red Dead Redemption 2, reaching the clouds is not a common occurrence. Unless Rockstar developed a horse Mark II, which would allow you to fly all over. Which wouldn't surprise me. But take a close look at this shot in the GTA 6 trailer where you see a bunch of cars doing burnouts. Now you might notice the typical smoke coming out of the wheels which looks normal, pretty and dense but normal, but look even closer and you will see two grades of smoke, giving the impression that smoke lingers for more than just the burnout, which is incredibly realistic as smoke is extremely hot and takes some time to cool off and dissipate. So you have the fresh, extremely hot smoke and the one that still remains in the overall area but is less dense and slower. That is an amazing detail that will most likely apply to the actual in-game engine. We're talking about smoke after all, something that is caused by the player and not just cutscenes. And notice how the lights pierce through the smoke. There's nothing technical to say about this. It just looks fucking beautiful, man. Now pay attention to this bombshell. I don't mean the thong wearing dude. I'm I'm talking about those windows. Which you may think I'm crazy as there's clearly just one window, but I really do mean windows in plural. Let me explain. Parallax design is a technique when you trace a slower movement of background layers to simulate depth to our game's foreground, without actually having to implement a 3D object to the background which would consume resources. In arcade gaming, this is as simple as making the background mountain move slower than the character in the foreground. But in modern 3D games, this is typically used to simulate interiors in unaccessible buildings. And to most gamers, the first game that comes to mind is Spider-Man by Insomniac Games. Without a doubt, it's amazing how good it looks, especially knowing it's used with very few resources, with literally one flat polygon simulating an entire room. But in this sliding shot in GTA 6 trailer, you can see Rockstar didn't simply simulate a single isolated room. You can actually see a background to the background by being able to see the window on the other side of the house from the inside out. It is still to be seen if this will actually align with the exterior position of the window, but I would say it's a bit ballsy from Rockstar to apply this and not match up in a final game. Some rumored that 70% of buildings will be enterable, and I heard the exact same shit about GTA 5, and it didn't happen. So yeah, I personally doubt that very much is gonna happen, as that would be a huge leap in technology. But I do think Rockstar will certainly focus in delivering the most lively world possible by making every residence lived in at least. In contrast to the shallow world of GTA 5 that I have always hated, like the NPCs just had no value to the world. You can also see a beautiful example of parallax in the first shots of the GTA 6 trailer, by the way. But on top of those parallax interiors, you can see how each floor of those building blocks may have a distinct feature that no other floor shares, like those drying clothes. And I gotta say, I love this approach of making a small little change that makes all the difference in delivering a very diversified world. Now, picture-in-picture -picture technology is one of those things that people take it for granted, really. But it can turn out to be such a headache for game developers. In basic terms, picture-in-picture -picture means that there is a second scene being rendered at the same time of the first scene. Mind you, this doesn't apply to any simple video. We're not talking about pre-rendered videos of fake TV shows as you have in GTA 5. We're talking about real-time rendered videos. The most typical cases of application of PIP, as many call it, is in mirror reflections, for example. Now, some would argue reflections aren't exactly PIP, but to this I say they're a bunch of nerds. <laughs> because from the moment you render a secondary screen 
it's the same concept and complexity of picture-in-picture -picture technology. There are different levels of complexity, true, but it is still picture-in-picture. GT5 has this when it comes to room reflections, but not in rear view mirrors, like you would see in racing games like Forza. But the most complicated application of this are usually seen in first person shooters. For when you want to have a magnified scope, but the peripheral vision still being of a human eye that can't magnify, of course. Unless you eat a lot of carrots. Life hack right there. This is a huge headache as you have pretty much have to spend the same resources that you are spending on a typical 3D rendering, but now doubled. Some game developers even resort to blurring the non-magnified view to save rendering power like it's the case with Squad. So what does GTA 6 do in its trailer? It flips a metaphorical finger to hardware limitations and pushes this technology to the max by implementing it in HD rear view mirrors. And on top of that, we can see this NPC taking a picture with the scenery actually being reflected in a magnified way. Which to most, this would be a completely unnecessary detail. But Rockstar being Rockstar, they have to prove why they're the boys with the big dickers right now. <laughs> Vehicle modularity refers to the ability of vehicles possessing a number of interactive elements that may depend on user input or interference from the in-game world. And even though car customization is a part of vehicle modularity, I'm actually focusing on the vehicle model itself with no modifications, because we know that's already going to be crazy. In the trailer, you can actually spot Jason and Lucia in a car that actually has customized lights in the interior, and they also reflect accordingly. But I'm not going to speak about spoilers hoods and all that kind of crap. For example, in GTA 5, vehicles are designed as a whole model paired with a texture file, where the only dynamic object inside the vehicle is the steering wheel. Pedals, levers, gear sticks are all static and bounded to the skeleton of the vehicle model. Only the steering wheel reacts to how the player controls the vehicle left and right. But as you can see from the GTA 6 leaks, or not, because I don't want Rockstar to nuke my channel, Pretty much everything is detached from the model skeleton. Even the car seats themselves can recline, although it will most likely be used to avoid clipping issues. Like for when you have a heavier fellow in a driver's seat and he needs some space. Which in itself is something that most companies don't even try to be perfect about. Since gamers have accepted a reality for all these years, that clipping is just something that will always happen. It's something that is unique to games. But it seems like Rockstar is aiming to shake things up here a little bit and create a new standard of avoiding clipping at all times. And the closest indication we got of that from the trailer is a countless NPCs peeking out of their car windows to interact with a given event. This is crucial considering that in GTA 5, vehicle models are as rigid as a bone. No matter how many times you try to send a grenade through a window, that is not going to be possible because a vehicle model has a rigid skeleton. Grenades and other 3D objects are not going to behave as they should in real life, considering these vehicles have very little modularity. But if the car components in GTA 6 are as modular as the leaks seem to give the impression of, all these actions that you can see in the trailer can very well translate into actual gameplay. Similar to how in Red Dead Redemption 2, wagon cargos are composed of actual individual 3D objects placed loosely on top of the vehicle model. I mean, look at the difference. In GTA 5, a grenade cannot reach the seat while we have Lucia waving her arms outside of the car body, which is a good indication that we're going to have much more dynamic vehicle models. But what I'm going to say is that all I want from this modularity is the ability to place a chick with a fat ass on the roof of the car. That's all I want. <laughs> Of course, we have to address the elephant in the room, okay? The amount of people seen strolling near the shore makes GTA 5 look like GTA San Andreas in terms of atmosphere. Look at this bland, disgusting, shitty world. Ugh, who plays that? Ugh, ugh, ugh. Now, sure, it has been 10 years, so that's a long time to improve. But there has been so many recent games that were not simply able to deliver such a lively world, even though that was their initial wish. Cyberpunk 2077 is clearly a controversial example, as the game didn't come out as polished as, as it was promised. But even in its current state after update 2.1, that seemed to fix a lot of issues that plagued this game for years, it's still not this, you know? The ambience is absolutely astonishing, with people interacting with each other, even if so 
inappropriately sometimes, but you see people passing beers to their broskies and all, some doing their own thing, but never alone. It is for this reason that Watch Dogs 2 has always been a game that I hold dear to me, as the game made you feel like you were actually part of the breathing city of San Francisco. And more recently with Spider-Man having NPCs share moments between each other, like playing ball or just generally having fun. I don't have to insult your intelligence in telling you why most game developers don't even risk creating a high population density for their open world games. Especially considering population density in gaming is kind of a huge snowball. You can aim for highly animated, realistic looking and behaving NPCs all you want, but the more developed they are, the more resources each NPC will consume. Memory overload, staggered frame rate and straight up crashes are the biggest hurdles in developing a realistic game world. I mean, look how GTA 5 behaves when you have more than 50 NPCs doing different animations. That was something that I noticed when making my Lamar Rosters Franklin video series, as no matter how much you mod the game, you cannot get around the fact NPCs will simply turn into a slideshow if you do too much. Many were blown away by the air physics in the trailer. The thing is, air-related physics aren't a new or that complicated of a concept to implement. At least not currently. But remember there was one poor sap working on Batman Arkham Asylum that spent two years just developing cape physics. And the cape is a single object that flops around. Now imagine multiple thin, lightweight pieces of hair. We certainly evolved past that with games like Horizon Forbidden West and The Witch 3 knocking it out of the park. But it is usually balanced on the decision of, is it worth it? Because for the super advanced engine we saw in the GTA 6 trailer, every single strand of hair has to be animated in real time. And that's the beautiful thing about hair physics. Even if the whole trailer is just cinematics, they still have to develop an engine for the hair. Because capturing hair in mocap is nearly impossible. So a hybrid system is what most companies go with, because it is, in the end, the easiest to do, but it still relies on the kind of engine they have for the hair physics. This takes a huge portion of a system system's processing power. Certainly, Rockstar intends to burn some PlayStation 5s with this game, but if they are able to deliver this hair physics engine with no hiccups in performance, GTA 6 will take an automatic jump to the number one spot in hair physics. Dynamic shadows, ray tracing, reflective clothing, and other elements that I noticed that, even though aren't that new and impressive anymore, it's still a glimpse of hope for modern gaming, where most new games have consistently disappointed us with poor performance and worse looking visuals. Even though hardware technology has only been getting better and better, and most importantly, more expensive, I'm down to one kidney by now, so it's nice to see a game that will, at least most likely, it seems, going to deliver what it promises. Because here's the raw, nice, and hard, nice, yeah, truth. I don't think Rockstar could financially recover if GTA 6 flops. Too many eggs in that basket right now. 